Hi everyone and welcome to the Stella Luna podcast. This is episode 25 I believe. Um, I've tried filming this episode a ton and I've had a lot of technical difficulties for whatever reason. Um, so hopefully this one goes well. I am filming in a different location today and that is due to the fact that my office is filled with advent yarn. So I am in the guest room which is right next to my office and stuff so yeah hence the change of scenery. Um, for those of you who are new here my name is Jackson and I am the dyer behind Stella Luna Fiber Co. I will have my website and stuff linked down below. Um, and if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm really glad to have you here. I'm glad to have everyone here, kind of no matter what. Um, I'm going to kind of quickly touch on shop news. So, um, if you are interested in an advent calendar, I do have two advent calendars that I am offering this year. And they are currently in the, um... Ooh, mine just blanked. Um, <laughs> they're currently in my website, stellalunafiberco.com. Um, first is a Sunday Advent. This year is a cozy Sunday Advent. So um, muted, softer colors, um, really cozy, wintry, but not Christmassy. And the way I operate with my Sunday Advents is they are four 50 gram skeins of yarn. You have the option of a sparkle skein, well not just a sparkle skein, but you have the option of doing a 75, 20, and then 5% um, sparkle yarn, so 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5%, I believe it's silver stellina for the 50 grams. Um, or you can get uh, a 50 gram merino sock, which is an 80-20 sock yarn. Um, and so it'll be about half a skein, and then um, you will have four skeins to open, and they're all mystery colors, and you open them on the four Sundays leading up to Christmas, and they just cost a little bit more than what two skeins would cost in my shop. So a nice, like, little affordable advent calendar option, and I did them last year, and people seem to really like it. So I'm offering it again this year and um, I'm very excited for that one. And I'm also very excited because this year I'm offering a 24 mini skein advent calendar with an optional additional full skein. Um, price is very kind of there, but um, you have the option again of doing uh, sparkle yarn or merino. And um, for the 24 mini skein advent calendar that is a gold sparkle yarn. So. Um, the only difference there is the Stellina instead of it being silver is gold Stellina. So, um, and that one is the Grinch themed. And I'm so tickled by this. But, um, it's inspired by the live action, the Grinch with Jim Carrey. And, um, so all of the minis are inspired by quotes. And so it's very colorful and fun. And very, obviously, very different from the Sunday, the cozy Sunday advent calendar. Um... And both of those are in the shop right now, so if you want one, go check them out. I'll have it linked down below if you're interested in them. Um, but that is my shop news for right now. Um, and then let's dive right on into kind of the regular podcast territory. Um, we're going to start off with finished objects, and the first finished object I am wearing. Um, so it's also my what I'm wearing today. I have on my Lodge Sweater by Ozetta, and I knit this out of my own yarn, so still Luna Fiber Co. on, ooh, I got a little, a little smudge or something on my cup. Um, don't look. We're going to hide that. Um, <laughs> this is knit out of my BFL Erin Base in Silver Fox. Try and stand up. I'm not quite sure how this will really show up on camera. So I'm not used to filming in here, but um, I love it. It is very much like a sweatshirt, and um, yeah, so I'm very happy to have this. And I'm happy to also, just in general, have it off the needles. It's very exciting. I am noticing a lot of little brown specks on 
this sweater and I don't know how that happened. That is so interesting. Hmm. Um, we're going to pretend that there aren't brown specks on this. This is probably because I maybe ate something. I shouldn't have been eating while I was working on this. But anywho, so that is my first finished object and it's a big, it's a doozy of one. I've been working on this since last year, probably since last summer, to be honest. Um, I'll have to go and check my Ravelry project page. Uh, speaking of, that will be linked down below so you can get access to patterns or any kind of other information you might want. Um, so it's first finished object. Second finished object is my very own silky scarf. This is a pattern by Petite Knits. Very popular on Ravelry. I have been eyeballing this and my sister has knit this and she was like, you need to make one. They're really fast. <laughs> I was like, okay, I would love a fast project. So um, casted this on out of my merino sock base held double in my calendula colorway. This is a colorway from my uh, Mayflowers collection that I came out with this spring. I love this colorway so much. It makes me really, really happy. And they got kind of fun, kind of uh, mustardy almost little speckles all throughout and this was pretty fast I am at least I think I'm a slow knitter I certainly get distracted really easily and um, so I pick things up and put them down pick things up put them down I'm also not a monogamous knitter so like I'll switch to a different project and make a good bit of progress on that and then not come back to it something for a while but um, I'm very happy to have this off the needles I think it is definitely, it's a little chilly today, but not like cold, but we are definitely past like big sweater and um, scarf weather, really, unless it's very, very early in the morning. Um, the past two days have been kind of fluky with the lows being in the upper 30s, but then it like warms up to like the upper 60s during the day. And um, I think this coming week, our highs are all in the 80s. So, Tennessee, get your weather together. It's not making any sense. But those are my finished objects, and I have uh, two half-finished objects to talk about. And so let's dive right in. I'm going to start off with the smallest one. <laughs> but um, I am currently working on some perfectly newborn baby socks. Uh, this is a pattern by Tabitha Gandy of uh, Hey Sister. Um, they aren't dying anymore, but there are some patterns that Tabitha's come out with that are online on Ravelry. I don't think she's come out with a pattern for anything in a while. But um, this is like a really fun little tiny like instant gratification project. And my best friend is very, very pregnant right now. Um, she is due at the very end of May and we are at the end of April right now. So... She is about a little bit over four weeks away from her due date. So I need to get um, kind of a move on because this is the only one I have done and I'm planning on gifting her three pairs of baby socks. So these are the colors I have chosen to knit baby socks out of. Um, she's having a little boy and so I didn't want to do just all blue baby socks. I think that this is like a fairly neutral gendered kind of blue um, and stuff because I wasn't sure what kind of stuff she'd want but she really likes Winnie the Pooh so I kind of picked some Winnie the Pooh feeling <laughs> yellows and um, and then if she does end up putting him in a lot of blue we have a, a cute little blue pair of socks um, if she even wants to use them as stuff he wears it could just be she keeps them as just something cute to have um, like a keepsake, which is perfectly fine. I just figured I would knit them for her. I do like knitting baby socks, but I just need to get kind of a move on because we're, um, we're getting close and I'd like to mail them out before little Mr. Owen enters the world. 
and I don't know why, but I have a feeling she might be, um, she might have him early. Don't ask me why, I was just thinking about that the other day, and I was like, I feel like she might have him early, and I, it was just a feeling. We'll see. I could be completely wrong. But my next half-finished object are a beautiful pair of socks. Um, these are the Primrose Socks by This Handmade Life. Um, I'm knitting this out of some deep stash. This is out of Woolberry Fiber Co's Berry Cashmere on the macaroon, like on her macaroon colorway. Um, love these socks. They are super cute and we have a beautiful little eyelet, little flower type um, pattern going on here. And I have started the second sock. Um, we are almost done with the cuff. It would appear, um, I was counting my stitches for the cuff and the number of rows I did does not really match what I typically do for cuffs. So I kind of disregard like how many rows or how long, long a cuff should be like on the pattern. I either knit 15 rows or 20 rows typically. And I think this counted out to being 17. And I was like, hmm, that's that doesn't fall into my typical cuff range. So I am, I think, let's see, where am I at? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I've done ten rows and I kind of stopped because I was kind of like, well, what did, what did I do? Um to get the cuff and I'm definitely a few rows short so um, we'll see um, but that is the only reason I've really put down the second sock uh, for these I am doing the medium size so uh, 64 stitches and um, I really like this pattern because you have a beautiful eyelet lacy pattern that is very easy to memorize and not difficult to follow. There's no real like uh, confusing or difficult instructions. So it feels just a little bit more thought needs to be present than vanilla socks, which I can handle right now. Um, anything uh, that's more difficult than that, um, I am just not in the mood for. Anything that I can't really memorize my my pattern or read it really well without, um, like if I have to spend a while to figure out where I'm at in my pattern, I don't, I'm not in the mood to knit on that kind of stuff. So like I have some socks that I cast on last year that are beautiful and I love them and I'm on the second sock, but I don't want to pick them up solely because the, the pattern is not an easily rememberable repeat and it's a little bit finicky. Um, so we're working on those. They've just been kind of put aside because I just haven't wanted to figure out what I did. And, um, so those have been worked on. I finished the first sock, I think last week, the, they'd been on the needles for a while. And that's mainly because there's a German short row heel. And, um, I know I've said this before in previous episodes, I'm not a fan. I don't hate the German short row heel, but I would much rather do a cut in afterthought heel and the German short row heel slows me down a lot. So that is that. And then last but not least, I have picked up, normally I'm not a, um, I like seasonal knitting. And again, I know I've talked about this before on the podcast, so it's a little redundant. But um, so like Christmas knitting, Advent knitting, that kind of stuff, I, I don't typically work on outside of like kind of the holiday season. But since I am full force into Advent dyeing right now with um, getting colorway recipes like determined and stuff like that, um, I was like, oh, I need to pick up my Advent knitting so I can get this off the needles before December 1st of this year because I want to knit with my own Advent this year. So um, last year I didn't knit anything with my own Advent. And, um, but since I have a 24 mini skein advent calendar, I do really want to knit with it. 
So I am working on my habitation throw. This is a pattern by Helen Stewart, I believe from her 2019 knit vent um, pattern collection. And I am knitting this out of the Woolberry Fiber Co. 2020 Lord of the Rings advent calendar. And um, I reorganized the colorways um, into kind of a gradient that I liked and um, use that as an advent calendar for 2021 and then um, casted this on in 2021 and I've just slowly been working on it for a year and a half so the goal is to have this done this year I am on color I believe nine one two three four five six seven eight nine yes i am on colorway nine so i just started i believe it's tree beard here um this colorway is um the one ring to rule them all and then i don't remember the other ones but i do have in my project page for this um a list of all the colorway names and what their actual day was um, in the original calendar. Not that it really matters, but um, I did include all of that information in the notes I have for my project. But I have been working on this. I love it. I like that I omitted the eyelet rows that are originally in the pattern um, because now this is just easy peasy garter with um, a little eye cord edge that you knit as you go. And um, I don't really have to think about this at all. It's just getting very big. It doesn't really fit nicely on the needles anymore. But uh, that's okay. I am perfectly fine with that. Um, and I love how the colors are looking. This is a really beautiful advent calendar and I'm really glad I got it. Um, but that is all that I have really been knitting on. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about some stuff that's like kind of future happenings. Um, if you live in the Chattanooga area, uh, April 29th will be a uh, local yarn shop day and the Chattanooga Yarn Co. is um, obviously celebrating. They are the yarn shop in the Chattanooga area, but um, they do have a custom colorway that I have dyed up for them. Um, that is like kind of their signature kind of limey green um, on my silk sock base and um, so go check them out if you're in the area. Um, it should be a really fun day. I'm going to stop by and kind of support them. Um, but that is happening on the 29th of April. And then um, later on in May I am going to be coming out with a collection of sock sets. Um, they are kind of a little bit um, inspired by uh, <laughs> the Crazy Sock Ladies um, sock, uh, Summer Sock Camp. Um, a little bit. Uh, I participate kind of sort of every year. I am at least knitting on socks and like pretending I'm participating. Um, even though I typically don't finish anything during the time of the knit along. But a lot of people like to participate and since it's a lot more casual this year, um, and I kind of like doing summer themed, uh, like things that I think of as summer for like summer collections. So last year I did a big beach road collection. Um, and just FYI, if you had your eye on pool floaties, um, that will be coming back to the shop in May. Um, but I will be having a Stella Luna summer camp inspired collection of sock sets coming out, um, towards the end of May. Um, that should be really fun. I'm currently in the middle of dyeing those up and getting those dye recipes prepared so I can take photos next week and get started on knitting some swatches and stuff with my sister during Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, which speaking of that, I will be at Maryland Sheep and Wool, uh, at the beginning of May. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, so yeah. Okay, hi, editing Jackie here. Um, I just realized that I have like a whole chunk of what I was saying like cut out from all of my filming footage so um, I'm gonna do like kind of a little mini recap right here 
So the gist of what's missing from the tail end of one of my clips is basically just stating that if you are interested in keeping up to date on the happenings of Stella Luna Fiber Co, things like that, um, if you go to my website, StellaLunaFiberCo.com, there is a um, section at the bottom of the home screen that is a place to sign up for our monthly newsletter. It is non-spammy. I send it out like at the beginning of the month with like kind of a general um, list of things that will be coming to the shop, that kind of stuff. Um, and so if you're interested in that, go sign up. Anything that doesn't end up on the newsletter will definitely be announced like on Instagram and stuff. Um, so again, if you're interested in following me on Instagram, go check that out. Um, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the general gist um, of what's missing. Find I'll have all of those things linked down below um, where you can find me on social media, where you can find me on Ravelry, all that kind of good stuff. So, but thank y'all so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.